Uh, I think it's hold on. Can you verbalize right. stuff, or do you need to send me a picture? Uh, I can verbalize it. It's radicals. Okay, cool. Let me pull up my drawing tablet here, and um, we'll just go through radicals. Yeah, and I got my homework right here, and uh, you can actually probably just go through that. If it's easier, actually, I can probably just send you a picture of my homework right now, now that I know what? how that all works. Radicals are so easy to verbalize that let's just do it that way. We only got okay. a half hour. We'll try to go as fast as we can. Your first okay. Uh, one second. Uh, and I, and I'm, I mean, whichever one you want to start with, we don't have to start from one and go to all the end, whichever ones you are a little confused about. Let's okay. Uh, all right. It is a uh, square root of three minus two square root of two plus six square root of two. The only thing you can do is combine like terms. Okay. Think of square root of two as an apple. Think of square root of three as an orange. All right. So if I have minus two apples and plus six apples. Mm, okay. Positive four. Okay. So I got positive four apples or root twos. And I still got that root three because I can't do anything with it. So that's my answer. Now, oh, okay. unless they wanted you to turn these into decimals, which I severely doubt. Yeah, no. They want you to leave it in radical form, right? Yeah, they just want you to okay. simplify it. When you are adding or subtracting, you can only add or subtract like terms. If I was multiplying, I could multiply those two. It would be square root of six. So I can multiply. I can divide. I just cannot add or subtract terms that are not the same. Okay. Um, next one is square root of five minus uh, five square root of 13 minus eight square root of five. Simplify that. Uh, that'd be um, negative 5 square root of 13 plus, no, minus 7 square root of 5. Good. Is that right? Yep. And that's it. Can't really do anything more with that. Okay. Um, now it's it's a little bit tricky after that. Yeah, well, sometimes they'll give you something that can be simplified so that it does have a square root of five in it. Uh, yeah. For example, let me just give you an example. Uh, minus uh, square root of 175, okay? There's two things that look like one's an apple and one's an orange. But if I notice, that is 25 times 7. So I get square root of 25, I meant to do this the other way around. I'm sorry. I meant to be able to simplify that and end up with a square root of five in there. Let's see, yeah. how would I get with a square root of five if I had 500, let's do that. Now that is the square root of 100 times the square root of five, square root of 100 is 10. Now I got one square root of five minus 10 square roots of five. I can combine them now. But I okay. first had to simplify that square root of 500 so that I had a radical that was the same as that. Okay. Okay. All right, and uh, it starts to get a little bit tricky after that. Okay. And uh, these are gonna be pretty hard for me to uh, Verbalize? Yeah, loud. yeah, to verbalize, but Try one. here it goes. Uh, so it's got three term equations after that, and it's got square root of 12 plus, actually, uh, yeah, square root of 12 plus 6 square root of 3 plus 2 square root of 6. Okay. Now, this is one. 
if I simplify square root of two, 12, I get square root of four times square root of three, right? Yeah. So let's do that first. That's got to be right because I got a square root of three there. That becomes two square roots of three. So now I can write the whole thing like this. Okay. And this over here I can write as two square roots of three times square root of two. Why is the O? Oh. oh, yeah, I see that. Because okay. square root of six is square root of three times square root of two. Okay, I can see that. Now. Just combine like terms? No, nah, not yet. Because I could combine the, I would have eight square roots of three plus that. But I can actually factor out a two root three. In other words, think of factoring out a greatest common factor. Well, I got a two okay. root three there. I can divide that by two root three, and I can divide that by two root three. So yeah. I'm going to factor out a two root three. And what's it leave behind? Uh, so that would be a uh, two. I don't know. Because I think that second one would be two, and then well, the one. It's going to be one. Oh, yeah, first one. I'm to divide that seconds. by 2 root 3. Mm -hmm. Then when I got to divide that by 2 root 3, that's 3. And when I divide this by 2 root 3, I'm left with this. Okay. So 4 that's square that. root 2. Well, let's see. I got 2 root 3 times 4 plus root 2. Now, there's nothing wrong with that as an answer. Uh, that's in factored form. I could multiply it out, probably should distribute it. So I get 8 root 3 plus 2 root 2, oops, excuse me, plus 2 root 6. So that could also be an answer. There's going to be a lot of answers that are okay here. This one is okay. So is this one? I'm not sure which okay. teacher would uh, want. Probably the shortest one. I guess okay. that's the shortest one. I don't know. To be honest with you, I actually always prefer my answers in factored form. Okay. And this is still in factored form, so I wouldn't bother with distributing it. Not unless it changes something. If it allows me to condense it further well then yes i would but this i do not consider a condensation of this it's merely multiplied out okay okay all right all right what else we got uh next thing we got is three square root of seven minus five square root of 14 plus two square root of 28. Like this? Yeah. Okay. Well, what do I notice? I got a square root of 7 here. I can turn that into the middle term into square root of 7 times square root of 2. And I can turn this third term into square root of 7 times square root of 4. So let's see what happens okay. when I do all of those. So this becomes 5 square root of 7, square root of 2. Make sure you understand how I'm doing that. Yeah, I see that. Plus 2, and I'll do it piece by piece here. Now, notice that I got a square root of 7 everywhere. So first of all, yeah. let's take that square root of 4, turn it into a 2, multiply it by that 2, and I get 4. Is that coefficient? Now, again, I got to think the next move is factoring. In other words, I can't really do much unless I factor a square root of 7 out. So I'm going to do right. it. What's it leave behind? Uh, the second one? 
or just the whole thing. Uh, the B uh, one, and then out a greatest common factor of square root of seven. So what is so left behind? When I say what's left behind, what do you get when you divide each term by square root of seven? You get three. Three, five, and four. Well, it's not three, five, and four. It's three, three five, and two. minus. Oh, three minus two. five plus. Hold yeah. On. When I divide that whole thing by square root of seven, those cancel, but I still have the minus five root two plus four. Okay. Now I can combine at least the two numbers. So I got square root of seven times seven minus five root two. And again, we're down to the same question we had on. Do you have answers on these? Uh, no, I don't have the answers. Okay. Because I don't know if he wants it in this form here or if he wants you to distribute it. If you want to distribute it, then it's going to be 7 root 7 minus 5 back to root 14. In okay. other words, you, you would never write root 14. That does not simplify into that. It's true that that's an equation, but you would never do that. The only time you simplify a radical is if you can pull a whole number out of it. And I can't. In other words, root 14, I can turn into root 7 times root 2, but that's more complicated than root 14. So I don't do it. I only okay. simplify it if I can pull out a whole number. Otherwise, you leave it in this format. In other words, root 10 also does not simplify Root 8 does. Root 8 becomes root 4 times root 2, which is 2 root 2. So after a while, you kind of get used as to which ones of these simplify and which ones don't. Okay. But again, I would say either that's the answer or this is the answer. Okay, cool. And then it steps up a notch. It uses cube roots. Okay. And... Then it's a cube root of negative 81 plus 4 cube root of 3. Uh, normally, you know about fractional exponents, right? Yeah. Cube root means the same thing as to the one-third. Yeah. I don't particularly see any advantage of doing that here. What I want to know is, can I simplify that? Is there a perfect cube number that is a factor of 81? Let's examine uh, three. perfect cube numbers. No? I think it's three. It's not. There is a perfect cube number, one. Two cubed is eight. Three cubed is 27. Oh, so four, I know. That. Oh, I'm going to pull out my chart. I, I have a chart in here. Well, you don't want a chart. What you want to do is memorize these perfect cube numbers. Oh, yeah. And now is all I got to do is, is 81 divisible by any of these numbers? And yes, 27 goes in exactly three times. Oh, yeah. I can write this. And I'm going to write it like this. I want the... Um, minus 27 to be there and the 3 to be there. Okay. okay. And I chose the minus sign because you can take the cube root of negative numbers. What is that? Um, if it's a cube root, then would that make it negative again? Negative 3. Right. So this becomes negative 3 cube root of 3. That's what this becomes. Okay. Plus I'm adding 4 cube roots of 3. What have I got? You got, uh, it would be a positive 1 cube root of 3. So it would just be cube root of 3. Exactly. Finally, one that's simple okay. right down to a a small single term that we can be certain of as opposed to these factored terms. But when yeah. you're working with cube roots, this is the table you want to know. 64 is the next one. That's 4 cubed. 
5 cubed is 125. So actually, if you just know those five, that'll handle all your problems. They won't, okay. they won't even ask you about 6 cubed. But they okay. do want to know 2 cubed, 3 cubed, 4 cubed, and 5 cubed. Okay. And um, uh, this one seems a little bit tricky. Uh, six cu six uh, cube rooted. No, wait, hold on. Yeah. Okay. And then inside of the cube root is 128t minus 2 cube root 2t. I think you mean this. Right? Uh, hold on, let me check that again. And there's a two on the outside of the cube root. Of the second cube root, I mean. Like that? Yeah, just like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see if we can... This minus sign is not here, right? Yeah, no. In other words, let me let me just make sure I got this right. And it is 128t, right? Mm -hmm. And this one is 2 times cube root of 2t. Yeah. And it's just an expression. It's not an equation. They just want you to simplify the expression. Yeah. Well, let's start with the number 128. Let's go through our perfect cube numbers again. 8. 27, 64, is 128, are any of those factors in 128? Uh, yeah, it's 64. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this as cube root of 64 times 2t, cube root of 2t. Okay. Okay. Okay, so all I've done is broken it up. In other words, that's exactly what that is. My same thing. Okay. Two cube root of two t. Well, notice we got a bunch of two t's here. What's the cube root of sixty four? Uh, that would be uh four. Would that be four? Four times six is twenty four. So I got twenty four cube roots of two t. Minus two cube roots of two t. What's that equal to? Uh, that would be a twenty-two cube root of two t. Yep. In this case, our cube okay. root of two t is the apple. We got twenty-four apples minus two apples. All right. Cool. Okay. okay. And then. Uh, see here okay if this one's really complicated let's see here it's a square root of 7y and in parentheses a square root of 27y then plus 5 a square root of 12y and then end the parentheses like that Exactly like that. And these are all square roots. Yeah. Well, see, this one is 9 times 3, so I can simplify that. This one is 4 times 3, so I can simplify that. So let's do that for starters. So this becomes square root of 9 times square root of 3y. Notice I leave the y with the number that I can't simplify anymore. Okay. Over here, I've got 5 times square root of 4 times square root of 3y. Okay. Multiplying the whole thing by square root of 7y. That right. is number 3. That is the number 10. So let's do what's inside the parentheses. I got 3 root 3y plus 10 root 3y. How many 
root three Y's do I have? Mm, two. Three plus ten. Thirteen. Now, I'm still all multiplying that by this. Okay. Now, that can definitely be simplified by distributing. <clears throat> and the reason I know is because <clears throat> when I get square root of y times square root of y, that's going to become y. Okay. So the way I'm going to distribute, the way I'm going to multiply that by that is just put that as the multiplier of that. So I end up 21, 13 times the square root of 21y squared. Okay. okay. I get that. Well, the y squared can come out as a y. Oh, yeah, because it's square rooted. Uh-huh. And the square root of 21 is the square root of can't simplify it. So just keep it square root, square root of 7 times square root of 3, but that's not simplified. So I leave it as square root of 21. There's my answer. And there, okay, are cool. no, there are no other factors of 21. In other words, if there is not a perfect square factor, it is simplified by definition. You have to have a factor that is a perfect square number other than 1 to simplify those. All right. Okay, and just for example, I never would simplify, I would never reduce that to that. Neither of those factors is a perfect square number. So if yeah. I have square root of 50, I'm always going to make it square root of 25 and a half times square root of 2, and that I pull a whole number out of, and that is simplified. But that is not. Okay. okay? All right. All right, cool. What else? We don't have much time. We got a minute or two. If you, yeah, yeah. I'll throw you my co most complicated one. And okay, see. let's do it. I'll probably take a little time. All right, cube root of two, and then in parentheses, cube root of one hundred and thirty-five minus four cube root of five. End parentheses. All right, let's take these. That potentially can be simplified. Certainly, this one can't be. And cube was that cube root of five or square root of five? That was cube root. Yeah, it was cube root. Okay. So 135. Again, let's list our perfect cube numbers. Oh, that's uh, that's five. Divisible by I think it's divisible by 27. Is it not? Uh, five, yeah. five yeah. times 27 is 135. So that's the yeah. first thing we're going to do. See, it's really handy to have these perfect cube numbers and to know what they yeah. are because you can see where I start. I try to divide it by 8. No. Try to divide it by 27. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that is the cube root of... 27 times the cube root of 5. Cube root of 27 turns into 3. Okay. Now I got 3 cube roots of 5 minus 4 cube roots of 5. What's inside the parentheses? I'll uh, be... Second. Uh, negative 1 cube root of 5. Uh-huh, or just negative cube root of 5. And now oh, yeah. you can multiply those together because for the same reason you don't that you don't uh, take, in other words, this is going to be the answer. Okay. And if you started with that, I would never separate it into cube root of 2 times cube root of 5. Okay. So when I have it separated, I'm always going to multiply it back together to get one term instead of 2. And All right, I guess. whether I put the negative sign on the inside or the outside, doesn't really matter. 
All right. Cool. Well, that's understandable to put it on the outside just because nothing is happening to that, so I just leave it there. So I'm really taking the cube root of 2, multiplying it by the cube root of 5 to get the cube root of 10, and the negative sign just came along for the ride. All right, cool. And I think Thank that you. is actually the same answer as this. The negative sign there can be inside or outside because it's cube root. In other words, you can take the cube root of negative numbers or positive numbers. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Sully, you good to go? Pretty much, yeah. Thank you. I think you get this stuff. Feels like yeah. Okay. I'll talk to you next time. Uh, I, we're still on for Tuesdays and Thursdays, right? Uh, yes. And I had told you that I wasn't going to be able to do this last Tuesday. Did I tell you that in advance? Uh, no. I, 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 sure. I meant to. I was no, going to okay. text you that morning. But you obviously figured it out that I wasn't there. Uh, but that's the only, <laughs> yeah, I didn't that's get the only Tuesday. Uh, from now on, I'll be available Tuesday and Thursday at 6 for you. Okay. Okay? Gotcha. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. All right. See you.